Hi, I'm Kevin Magiacomo, President and CEO of SVN International Corp. SVN is one of the fastest growing commercial real estate brands in the United States and abroad, and we're here to find out a bit more about what's driving that growth. As part of our ongoing SVN outreach series, we like to look at commercial real estate from different angles and perspectives, and from time to time put the spotlight on our brokers who exemplify what it takes to be an SVN advisor. Today we're sitting down with three of our consistently top performing SVN advisors. What I think you'll find interesting is that they come from very different markets, have very different styles, and even focus on completely different asset classes, yet all have built their success through SVN's unique philosophy of collaboration. We feel that their stories illustrate what we like to call the SVN difference. Today we have with us Tony Youssef, Tony serves as Director of National Accounts for SVN. He acts as single point of contact for a number of institutions throughout the nation and overseeing the management and value add strategies of assets for the likes of Colony North Star, KeyBank, Goldman Sachs, PNC Midland, and more. Welcome, Tony. Alex Ruggieri uh, is here operating throughout Illinois and with more than 40 years of commercial real estate experience. Alex has closed more than 500 million, I think the number was, in commercial real estate sales volume. He's served in numerous national leadership positions, including serving as the chair of the Commercial Leadership Forum for NAR and is a true influencer on a national scale. Glad to have you here, Alex. And last but not least, we have Scott Mazel operating primarily here in Chicago, but part of a team which operates SVN offices in Chicago and Denver. Scott is not only closed hundreds of transactions over his 20-year career, but is also a leader in his community and within the larger industry, having served as chairman of the Commercial Forum, member of the Board of Directors of the Chicago Association of Realtors, and more. So welcome, Scott. Thanks, Tim. We are coming to you from the SVN Chicago office. It's great to be with you here this morning. Let's get right to it. Gentlemen, I'm going to start by asking each of you to speak to the SVN core values, which really underpin, drive, and serve at the heart of your business growth strategies. At SVN, we often talk about operating at the intersection of purpose and profit. You've heard me talk about that before, about business, bringing business, society, and our communities together to, to create what we call shared value, which is generating economic value in a way that also produces value for society by addressing its challenges. And as I mentioned in the intro, one of the goals of the SVN Outreach Series is to highlight and promote SVNs building its businesses through shared value by recruiting more diverse advisors and franchise owners, but also by partnering with our local communities. And we've since launched the SVN Communities Fund to finance community impact programs and events. You know about that. We've partnered with patronicity.com to serve as its platform. Scott, you are heavily invested in your community. You live here. Your practice is heavily focused here. Talk about how you align your business with your community and why it matters to you. Well, before I affiliated with SVN, <clears throat> I realized that my personal values and the values of the core covenants of the company really actually blended pretty well um, from the standpoint of being involved, not just as a broker, but as someone who is involved in a gra grassroots kind of approach in my community. Uh, I've sat on many boards um, and recognized that there is, okay, we basically operating at the intersection of profit and purpose. Um, the purpose is where community, like you said, where I live, I have our business, I own real estate, my, I'm, I'm raising my children here. Community is the backbone for how I do my business every day. And, you know, it's the old adage, if you don't get involved, you're not able to say something. So I'm very involved both on, a, on a, um, being involved with our, our city parks. Uh, I'm currently president of the West Loop Community Organization here um, and involved with the city on a lot of their initiatives in this neighborhood. Now, it, it, this is not about being philanthropic. You know, I'm sure you donate to worthy causes mm -hmm. and you write a check. This goes above and beyond that. This, right. this is about making money, exponentially scaling your business faster than you otherwise could mm -hmm. while simultaneously elevating your community. Is, is, is that Agreed. It in a nutshell? Agreed. Uh, mo all, almost all the positions I'm in are 100% volunteer positions. So it's, it's not about being philanthropic. philanthropic. It is about what is the legacy that I'm going to leave both for the work I'm doing here, the company I'm building, and to be proud to point to clients and deals that we've done and say that's something that the community you know, appreciates, it was developed well, it serves the community, 
uh, and, and adds to the overall uh, lifestyle here. And business follows from those efforts, I would imagine? Absolutely. Um, we have seen it time and time again where we also pride ourselves on having encyclopedic knowledge of, of, this, uh, of this market. So we have uh, been more than one time been the second or third broker, which we, uh, we actually like for the fact that our market knowledge has then got us business. But I think it's also our community involvement and kind of a raising of our profile as a company. Um, we have done events uh, all over this neighborhood and other neighborhoods, um, I think, which helps garner business as well. Yeah, it's, it's truly a high fives all around. So creating shared value is, is, is deep in our SVN DNA. The company was born in 1987 with a mission which was then and is today to create amazing benefits with our clients, colleagues, and communities. And I think you heard that now. We do this not to be philanthropic, but to grow our businesses, again, exponentially faster than we otherwise could while simultaneously working to elevate the communities in which we live and work. That sits at the root cause. Alex, uh, the SVN Core Covenants, there are 10 of them. You know them well. They guide everything our advisors do with and for the brand. They include things like committing to proactively cooperating with all brokers and always placing one's client's interests first, but they speak to much more than that. What do they mean to you, and how have you incorporated the SVN Core Covenants into your practice? Well, I appreciate the question because it was critical to us in our affiliation with uh, SVN in the very beginning and uh, it all came out of I mean I had gone back to school to get uh, my MBA at the University of Illinois through the executive MBA program and you know we were reading you know all these different uh, uh, you know like Deming and uh, we were reading Covey and all of these different things and we decided you know we're going to we need to have our own vision statement we need to have our own mission statement and we need to have our own core covenants and so we decided as a group uh, and this was well before we ever uh, even heard of SVN, that we would sit down every Wednesday morning and we did this from 7.30 until 8.30 every Wednesday morning for about five months, hammering out what our vision statement was going to be, what our mission statement was going to be, what our core covenants were going to be. And so we had those, you know, we framed them, we put them on the wall, and we started to try to emulate those in our business model. And then um, time went by and uh, we decided what we really need to have an affiliation with a national uh, franchise that had that can give us the horse marketing horsepower that can give us the tools and national reach and I literally went on a quest and started interviewing different possibilities with different uh, affiliations and different groups and and one of those was was SVN and I, I was shocked and amazed that when I got the core covenants and I laid them down right next to our mission statement, our, our uh, vision statement, and our, you know, what we call our 10 principles, it, it almost became like one of those uh, Sunday newspaper puzzle things where, you know, our number two was, was equal to uh, your number four and, and your number six was like our number three. And, and it just, they, they were all there and they matched up perfectly. And that's literally when we made the decision that we would affiliate. Um, with SVN and uh, it's really interesting because and I love telling the story uh, I was pretty successful in, in our market we we're in a smaller market uh, and I was still a top broker in our market but my income and this is just a fact doubled the first year with SVN doubled and the interesting thing was the very next year it doubled again and I made partnership circle for the first time and, uh, you know, since then, I've made Partnership Circle uh, something like six times in the last uh, 10, 12 years. And uh, so it's been a really good thing for me as far as income and, 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 and the business is concerned. But the thing that I thought was really interesting about what uh, Scott and Tony were saying is, is that this whole idea of giving back to the community, too, is central to the, to the ethic uh, an ethos of our culture at SVN and it's something that like I said matched up perfectly with my own and one of the things that I've done is uh, served on a lot of uh, charity boards that kind of thing over the years uh, we've been involved with the mental health center uh, for 25 years I was on the board for 10 years president for three years um, my partner was on the board for 10 years the, his son's on the board now and we've really you know, uh, tried to give back to the community that way. Uh, currently, I'm on the CASA board. Uh, I'm on the hospital board. 
uh, back at home and uh, I'm on the Housing Authority Board. Uh, and those are just the charitable boards. I'm on some business boards too, as well as being on our local board uh, for the association. And what's interesting is, is that I've never done anything that I didn't want to do out of passion for the cause. Uh, but it's like, because you're doing those things, it just, the business just kind of comes your way. And uh, like the radio show that I've done for 10 years, I, I, they don't pay me to do it. I do it as a volunteer and I highlight unique and interesting businesses in our community. And I've done that uh, for 10 years. And I, I, was, I was telling Scott before we started, you know, I started adding up all the business that came my way just because of the radio show, even though I never once asked for business and the, and the fee was over, uh, uh, you know, 500, you know, I mean, it was just a lot. It was half a million dollars of transactions, you know, fees that I, that I got. And now the media corp that owns the radio station, the newspaper and the magazines listed all of their corporate property with me for sale. And we've got a closing coming up on their warehouse, you know, three million dollar warehouse. And we still have, you know, their corporate office and their, and the radio station itself for sale. So <laughs> never once asked for business, but it, it, it has something to do with this ethic uh, that, uh, and, and I think it's not that SVN owns that uh, in, in the world, but you have embraced it in a way, and, and, and I know the culture is there with the people. They've embraced it, and it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to see. We're going to track back to culture in a minute, so hold that thought. Yeah, I want yeah, your yeah. input on that front as well. But, Scott, speaking to the SVN core covenants, um, I know that you've included them in your listing presentations. I know that you ask all of your new hires and every uh, 1099 independent contractor that's affiliated with your business to sign that document. What do those mean to you and how do you put the core covenants into practice? Well, I think one of the things that uh, I realized when I first read the core covenants, I thought was standard practice that brokers would put their client's interest ahead of their own. I thought that was, that was part of my DNA, that's how I operated. So that one is probably one of the biggest ones. Um, and it is something that shows our differentiator to other firms. Um, and it is something that, you know, it, when you talk about core covenants, you talk about how you operate, how you deal with people, how the environment that we created out here. Um, and if they don't get that, we, sh we, we recognize that they're not gonna be a good fit here because the core covenants are our culture, our culture are our core covenants. And you know, it's been it's 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 almost if if they don't get that, then I, I guess the in, the interview's over. Introduced more than what thirty years ago, today the SVN core covenants enhance our culture of collaboration. I think you heard that attracts and retains people within the organization, helps resolve disputes between advisors, and is really the basis of our competitive advantage. To your point, Scott, let's pivot a bit and talk about SVN culture. Uh, Tony, through your national accounts work, and I, I looked up this data this morning, you referred out to 75 different SVN advisors, 73 closings, and more than $5 million in fees in 2017. Advisor competency across markets through SVN is obviously a big key to the success of your system, but so is SVN culture, I would think. So tell us about how the two tie together and how the SVN culture is such an integral part of your running your commercial real estate practice for success. Oh, absolutely. So I think the key difference, uh, two differences, is there's absolute collaboration. Um, you can go to any of our national events and you'll see this family. Um, and when we bring third-party folks that are not affiliated with SVN uh, and I told this to you last week that a lot of these folks thought that this event was staged because <laughs> they're not they're not used to the yeah. brokers dealing with one another the way that we do we really want each other to succeed and we're always going to look out for best interests of the client and best interests of one another and for for me in this last 10 years dealing with institutions nationally I need really competent and entrepreneurial thinking advisors on the ground because when we take back any of these assets, a lot of these institutions are really relying on us from a local standpoint on what they should be doing with this asset. 
and we look at it as if we are going to own this asset and we have about a two year timeline to add value, manage it, do some leasing, and then you know either reposition or just dispose of the asset. And the competency level at this company is far beyond the competition. And the reason I could say that is because our clients tell us that. And they say, you, you all give us that type of service that we cannot get from anyone else. When we call on you, you take care of it, whether it's a $100,000 deal or a $50 million deal the same way as if it's your you know, family's deal, it doesn't matter. And that's the difference is that everyone is so responsive. They take on their, their, uh, uh, the assignments as if it's their own. And this is the main reason I continue to stay at this company. Um, there is you know, no babysitting. Um, everybody that I deal with, I know and trust is going to do the best job possible. And we're only as, as strong as our weakest link. And you know, if there's one advisor that I give an assignment to and they don't do a good job or they place their buyer's interest in front of the seller, AKA my client, then we're done. And this industry is so small that it gets out. And right now I'm, I'm glad about word of mouth. I do little to no marketing. It's because all the institutions speak of us as honorable, hardworking, very competent, and we've been able to take a lot of business from larger institutional corporate-like brokerages that don't think of things as, you know, like an entrepreneurial way. So, Alex, you made some comments about culture earlier. Anything to add? Well, I, I just can't uh, do anything but piggyback on, on what Tony said. We've worked together and, and things, and, you know, I'll tell you, he's intense to work for. I mean, he holds you accountable, and it's wonderful, uh, and it really is. Uh, but, I mean, I was just thinking in terms of the way things work here. I, I, I had a builder refer a fella to me one time, and he walked into my office, and this was early in the day. Of, I had just affiliated with SVN. It had been a year or two. And the gentleman said that he had this office building and he described it as really nice, like a $3 million office building and it was, you know, full of tenants. And he just described this beautiful, perfect, uh, 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 you know, listing I'd love to have. And then he said, well, so-and-so recommended you, so we'll be working together and uh, you put everything together. Here's the information. And, and, uh, and then as he walked out the door, he said, oh, by the way, the property's over in uh, Lafayette, Indiana. Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> At the time, I had not done anything over state lines. I had just done things local. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, not a problem at all. We'll be in touch soon. And I'm like, oh, now what am I going to do? I immediately got on the um, horn, and I called my SVN compatriot over there. And I said, here's what just happened. Can, can we work together on this? And he said, oh, absolutely. And uh, long story short, we sold that building. And, uh, uh, you know, we, it was $150,000 fee. And uh, uh, so we split that and shared it. He, he worked the uh, ones to the Indiana side and I worked the Illinois side. And uh, so we each got $75,000 on that thing. But the really cool part about that was the guy was so happy, he called back a month later and listed a um, $24 million student housing property on the campus of Purdue with the two of us and we sold it long story short i mean i don't want to make this sound too easy because we worked our butts off on that that deal for about two and a half years before it closed but but that royalty is too low yeah (laughs) but that was but i'll tell you the client was very loyal i mean because deal fell apart a couple of times and he always relisted it with us and in the end it was six hundred thousand dollar fee which we split and that's what this culture can do for you because you know, and, and to me, that blew me away. And that's when I started working with anybody in our network that I could, whether they were in my state or not. And that has really bo- boosted my income dramatically is that I've been able to count on the cooperation, collaboration, and compensation from my SVN compatriots. And I'll tell you, on that $600,000 fee, I didn't even go to the closing. I got a text on my phone from the SBN broker 
who attended the closing because it was across state lines. It was, a, you know, and I was actually in another state at the time. And he just said, the Eagle has landed. I just deposited $300,000 in your account. Driven by the SVN. Just, just driven by the culture, the trust. Yeah, and you know, we, we, our mission statement is that we create amazing benefits with our clients, colleagues, and our communities. And those are the three stakeholders that benefit, but so do our businesses. The, yeah. the, the culture, again, isn't just about doing good, doing the right thing. That, 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 is, that is all of it, but it does serve as the basis on which we scale our businesses. Absolutely. Uh, well, I also think that one of the things that we didn't talk about with culture is team. I have a team within with, who does transactions with me. I have a team with all my agents out here, and I have a team all across the country. So for me, I'm an organized sports guy. I played football, played lacrosse. Team, I, I, it's just always ingrained in me. So that's something that I think the culture this culture breeds teamwork. It breeds a mentality of, well, everybody's competitive. Don't get me wrong. You just talked about how yeah. his work ethic and how yeah. he pushes you. We're all yeah. competitive. We're all on the same team. Right. And that alone, that's, that's a huge part of this culture that we, lo that we love. To me, the culture can be best described as a culture of trust. Uh, you know, and we, we talked about this at our annual conference uh, a few months ago. And this tracks back to our founding. So SVN was launched as a functional brand, but a brand with, an, with a point of view. We had an opinion, right? And that point of view was that the business models of brokerages should be in line with the objectives of their clients. They weren't, and they're still not. Still. Uh, <laughs> in line with that belief was our model of proactively cooperating with the entire brokerage community on all of our listings. The result, among other things, is that the brokerage community knows that they can rely on SVN for half the fee if they bring a buyer to one of our listings. And in casually processing this with our chief operating officer, Diane Danielson, recently, she distilled it down to something really very simple, yet eye-opening. And that was that what we've created in a brand over time, over hundreds of thousands of transactions, literally, and through the SVN advisor base, is trust. Trust among our peers and our competitors. Trust within the organization to do the right thing. So we do things right, we work to do the right thing, and we do both proactively. In short, it's, it's trust and honesty as a competitive advantage that underpins the unique culture of SVN. I constantly use that word, and I think that yeah, which is word? trust. You know, and it comes with care, right? Um, there are a lot of our competition that comes up to me, um, and friendly competition, that constantly say, you know, you were nowhere to be found 10 years ago, and here you are, you're taking a lot of business from us. How are you doing it? I said it's simple to me, it's common sense, is that you strive to become a trusted advisor. And when your client knows that if they give you an assignment that you're going to take care of it as if it's your own, then it's going to automatically come exponentially. And that's it. And they look at me sometimes just completely confused and, and don't understand that simple motive. And, and you gotta be ingrained Powerful. with that. Right? And, and the culture has to be ingrained because, again, I could be a trusted advisor, but if the person on the ground that I rely on is not, then it's going to fail. And of the 10 years that I've, and I've worked with hundreds of our advisors, um, you know, we had maybe one person that didn't really, but we were able to police that person out and they're no longer with the company. And that's the thing is that we really do a good job in policing one another and making sure that we are all consistent in that trust, that care, that collaborative effort. I think one of our differentiators though, you can't teach culture, you can't teach trust, and you can't teach tr being a team. You, that's why going back to you either get it or you don't. Yeah, and, but I think that the company does support it because like you said, Tony, when, when somebody doesn't get it, pretty right, soon right, they're so not they're around. Not around. Right. And, and so the company does support that idea. And I'll tell you how powerful it is because it goes well beyond the company because the brokerage community as a whole knows they can trust us. There are some brick and mortar types that they just know that they don't even bother because they're either not going to get paid or they're going to be asked to go get a fee structure from their buyer or whatever. But they know that we're different. We let them participate in our weekly calls. We, we send them full packages when they ask for the information. And they know that we 
cooperate, we collaborate, and they know, most importantly, we will compensate. That is an aura that goes out beyond the SVN group to the, to the community, the real estate community at large. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, we've been talking about what we call the SVN difference now. If you think about it for the last 20 or 30 minutes, it's rooted in our culture, it's rooted in our approach to creating shared value. Uh, but the company was founded on, again, and has for more than 30 years, led the charge towards something else, which is indus industry transparency and total cooperation. And this exists, again, in an industry uh, centered around locked doors, locked drawers, and unfortunately very little collaboration amongst colleagues in the industry on the investment sales side. The reality is that the commercial real estate business operates in an environment where the listing broker controls the flow of information to potential buyers on investment sales transactions which discourages competition, reduces eyeballs, creates fewer eyeballs, and often causes a property to sell for less than market value. That's the way the industry is set up. And in the instance where the listing broker does share information, they often refuse to share the commission, leaving almost no incentive for buy-side brokers to show their listing to their pool of buyers. Now, as the three of you know, our marketing focus is rooted on working with the entire brokerage community, to your point, to market our listings, sharing one half of the list side fee in the process. And this approach creates organized competition and follows the fundamental laws of supply and demand and plainly affects a better result for the client. Scott, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. How do you use the SVN difference, this sharp point of differentiation, when you discuss your services with clients? Sure. Well, let me take one little step back and say when I first got involved with SVN, I had prior to that had run the commercial division of a highly successful residential firm. Residential cooperates. Residential is transparent. So that was it, it was very normal for me to as that being part of it. So when I realized the SVN difference, one of the things I would say and what I used most of the time when I discuss with my owners is I say, Tell me how you bought this property. I said, we we the only individual at the table. Was there anybody around? I said, No, I found it off market. It was great. It was the best deal I could find because there was no one around. I said, well, that's wonderful when you're buying a property. I said, but you never want to sell the way you buy or buy the way you sell. And I said, what you want is you want competition, you want supply and demand, you want eyeballs, all that. So it was a story here in Chicago that no one had told. So it's, it's taken a while to get that message across, and, and we still have some very big players here that do it the old school way, but we've been very successful in this market uh, to actually be, like I said, be the second or third broker and our point of differentiation of saying, look, this is in the client's best interest, not the broker's best interest, to ensure that everybody, when you hire us, you hire the rest of the brokerage community. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 very, it's been a very easy discussion for, Tony, for us. Tony? Yeah, everyone knows, who, who knows me, knows that I only represent sellers. Um, it's our fiduciary duty to make sure that we are not having any type of conflict. And for me, I only want to represent that side. And my sellers are very large institutions that have been used to the old way. Um, and it's a constant battle trying to explain to them that if we share this with everyone, it's going to create a competitive environment. And they constantly say, well, why are we hiring you if you don't already don't know who the buyer is? No, you don't understand. We are going to bring those buyers as well. But we don't want to alienate the brokerage community from bringing those buyers as, uh, their buyers as well. And constantly we're trying to prove to them and we're doing it over and over again where we'll have eight buyers, five of them are represented by brokers, three of them have been brought in by us and we show them, look, you have the pick of the litter. And we've created a competitive environment that drives up the price that's beyond what logic you know, says. I mean, there's this competitive premium. And it's, it's shown to the institutions over and over again where Goldman Sachs and all these guys haven't done that way. And they're starting to say, huh, we're paying the same, maybe another point, but that point that we're giving to the outside community drives 5% more in value. And it's, it's obvious, we take matrix, we show them that it makes a difference, and we're trying and we have been constantly fighting to impress on the fact that it does make a difference. So we, let, let's get down to some of the specifics here and talk about those examples where you've created organized competition, multiple offers, and have driven a property and a sales price further than your seller thought possible, further than 
the next highest offer coming from an un unlikely buyer. Any, any of these examples will, will be appropriate. Uh, what we did on our end to examine the impact associated with co-op transactions, those are investment sales transactions in the entire brokerage community, one listed by one broker, and wherein the transaction closed with a cooperative or competitive broker bringing in the buyer. Tied to the fundamental laws of supply and demand, those properties should transact for a higher price per square foot. We'll look at a, a variety of metrics. We commissioned a team of statisticians and looked at 10 years of sales records, 15,000 transactions, and what we found through our 9.6 report, which you, which you all know well and have read, that properties on average trade for 9.6% more on a price per square ba foot basis when two brokers, one on the list side, one on the buy side, are involved. Examples you want to share that fit with that? <laughs> uh, you know, we're, on average, we're selling about 70 deals a year. And I, I, I get my own statistical difference each year, and we look back at it. And of those, you know, 70 or so, I'd say 80% of them have a co-broker. And it's obvious to me because the client keeps coming back to us. You know, they're saying, look, you are op you're absolutely getting us the best price possible. You're marketing it right. The, the way that you do it, the process that you do it um, is, is just the right way. You're, you're making sure from day one that everyone out there, whether it's the United States or globally, knows about this property and that when they call, whether it's a broker or a buyer, you provide the same type of service. And that translates into more money for the seller and it translates into more business for us. It's pretty simple. Yeah. I, I can give you a really great example because, and, and, and I love Scott's statement about, well, when you hire me, you, you're hiring the whole brokerage community. And I do give that same kind of presentation. And I had a client and it was, the family owned a lot of real estate on the campus and I do a lot with student housing. And they uh, were interviewing me and they were interviewing another broker. And uh, I told them the whole thing about collaboration, compensation, all of that and the whole SVN model and how it wasn't always that way in other offices, but this is the way that we do it because it puts the seller's interest first. Well, whatever reason, I didn't get the assignment and I was pretty disappointed and the other fella did get the assignment and uh, sold one of the properties right away. And I get a phone call shortly after the closing because there were several other properties, I mean millions of dollars of properties, which I have under contract right now, by the way. And he called, he said, we, we want to work with you. I said, well, I, what happened? I said, you went with XYZ and I think he sold one of those already and everything else. And he says, well, when you have time, I'll tell you. And it, it all had to do with that broker exposed himself as putting his own interest ahead of the seller. Quietly marketing the properties. properties. Well, what he, yeah, and he did some things with the fee and all kinds of stuff where he collaborated with the buyer and, on, you know, and uh, just crazy stuff that was not in the seller's best interest without going into a lot of details. But my seller was like, hey, you were right. I should have listened to you. Turn around and list the rest of the portfolio with me, which I, I was able to sell. So, you know, sometimes you have to wait until they learn on their own. One of my unique stories is uh, part of where I focus is right here in the, uh, the Fulton Market area, uh, which was uh, famously known as our meatpacking district here in Chicago. Um, and a lot of my clients were meatpackers that were ultimately leaving the neighborhood. Um, one of the individuals that uh, was a portfolio that I sold uh, about a year and a half ago uh, was a record price per square foot at $36 million. Um, but one of the things I recognize one of the times after getting to know these, these, uh, these sellers for a long period of time, and walking in one day and hearing him on the phone negotiating for hundreds of pounds of meat, saying, I'm going to pay you a buck 25. I can get it from this guy over here at a buck 10. Why are you doing blah, blah, blah? So he understood the supply, the demand. And I thought, OK, once I finally give him the formal presentation, he'll get it. And I said, we want to expose this to everybody. Uh, I think we had five offers. It was a big, a big ticket item. Um, the final offer that we had, because of the competition we created, was $1.8 million higher than the, uh, the next offer. Uh, and I think three of those were their broker and two of them were not. So that was a real world example of understanding our SVN difference, understanding what the cooperation does, 
and, uh, and they benefited from it. Well said. I'll tell you another example of uh, collaboration within the SVN group. Um, our city put out an F, uh, RFP because they had excess properties that they wanted to you know, market and, and, and uh, convert to capital for other projects. And they wanted to have those properties auctioned so that they could basically tell the council, look, we put it out there, we had them auction, we got the highest and best price. And so I, I'm not an auctioneer, all right, but I have a great relationship with the city, you know, for, been there 40 years. Um, so what I did was I got on the phone and I called our national accelerated marketing team and, you know, David Gilmore, Lewis, and, and the guys, and they were very excited about it and they leveraged my personal relationship and I was able to leverage their legacy of experience that went back decades of things that they had done and communities they had serviced and everything and we put it all together and the city gave us the assignment. And now this summer we're going to be doing the auction for millions of dollars of property and I would not have been able to get that assignment without the help of my SVN network. Constantly, each month, we're probably doing an average of about 50 to 100 what we call a broker opinion evaluations. And a lot of these institutions, multi-billion all the way to trillion dollar institutions, life companies, um, the likes of PIMCO, etc., are constantly looking for our advisor on the ground to give them that feedback and data. Uh, what we find today is, you know, in this world of information, that sometimes there's too much information and they want us to really sift through and tell them, you know, this is the accurate, uh, this, is, this is what the rents are, this is what the value is. And they're constantly giving us bigger and better assets. Why that's important is that is a pipeline. That's a pipeline for the SVN network. Of those 50 to 100 that we do per month, about two to three of those turn out to be a listing and a sale. And what we've been seeing in these last year or two years is that the average deal size keeps continuing to grow. Um, last year, again, the average deal size was right around five million, but I'm starting to see more and more listings. We're closing on a deal in two weeks that is gonna be $20 million. Um, we're starting to see 18 million, 15 million, you know, in the range that these clients who brought us on because we did not say no to the smaller stuff and because we took care of it, just like we would take care of a 30, $40 million asset, they said, you know, these guys are scrappy. They, they're, they're, they're definitely working this stuff as if it's their own. And we're going to graduate them to the, what I would say, vanilla cookie cutter assets. You know, a $30 million asset that's 95% occupied in downtown Chicago is, you know, you're dealing with sophisticated buyers, you're dealing with sophisticated sellers, it takes a little bit less of, you know, that, that grind, right? But um, we've been able to graduate and get to that point. And they're constantly looking at us instead of the CBs and the other folks that are out there saying that, you know, you guys are helping us when there is no paycheck and you're constantly responsive to us during that time. And you're helping us really understand and gauge where this asset is going to be. So you've obviously earned the right to sell this asset, lease it, manage it once the time comes. And, 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 and I flew to Miami and I met with a handful of Tony's clients and it's something that has to be experienced to be believed and understood. They truly do appreciate the pay it forward work and the effort that Tony and his team put forward uh, with no hope of a paycheck unless a deal comes to fruition and they are. And the level of deal flow emanating from a national accounts team is impressive. But if you could just name a few of the clients that you work with. Yeah, so Principal Financial is a life company. Um, they do anywhere from two to three billion dollars of transactions per year. And they are now, uh, we're working on putting together a note sale team, which is a natural evolution for what we do. And they already have given us 30 million dollars of that stuff. And we don't even have the team put together. Because they said, you know, we love the fact that you guys are doing something that we don't want others to have that business because they don't take care of this stuff as well as you do. Constantly apologizing to us that they're not giving us enough business. 
which is a fantastic place to be. Um, we're working with Colony Northstar, it's a $60 billion company, uh, Goldman Sachs, Key Bank, Midland, uh, named on $200 billion of special servicing. And they constantly look at us. You know, I got a call from one of our clients that they were just named on a billion dollar um, special servicing uh, pool and 700 million of that was REO, you know, owned real estate. And the first call that he said he made was to me saying, finally, we're going to be able to pay you back for all the work that you've done in the last two years. That's a pretty cool call, you know, and, and it makes me feel better because the folks like Alex and Scott and, and others that have done BOVs and haven't been able to get listings, I'm aw constantly reminding myself that I've got to make sure that this person is taken care of because they've been taking care of me and our clients. And, you know, I've, I've had meetings with, with clients where they say, we will not take the time to meet with any other vendor or broker, but for you, anytime, anywhere, we will because you take care of us as if we're your only client. And we're constant, we're, we're, we're taking care of, so my world, are 25 clients. And each one of those clients has no clue that we're taking care of anyone else but themselves. Because we're, we're always responsive, we take care of them, I'm on every call, you know, we're taking care of the, the, the asset as if, again, as if it's our own. And that's the difference. And they, they, they're always reminding me that no one else does that. And that, to me, is, is worth more than a paycheck, to be honest. I mean, that, I tell them that appreciation, when we come through the, the hallways of your office and you show us how much you appreciate, and they constantly say, we cannot grow and scale the way that we have in the last two, three years without the partnership of SVN. And you heard it. I did. You heard it time and time again. I did. That, to me, is rewarding. It is. Uh, and it's fascinating. Let, let, let's pivot and... You know, as an aside, I remember way back when, when did you join the organization? Which year? Ten years ago tomorrow, yeah, actually. You, you, you may have heard John McDermott yeah. you know, share the story at the Partner Circle dinner last Saturday, but I remember when you came up to me, you know, as a young gun with little to no brokerage experience saying, I'm going to start a national accounts team. It's an underserved facet of the market's region. <laughs> 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 you know, Rots are rocking, yeah. Rots are rocking, yeah. Sometimes that happens. You're right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Scott, let's let's track back to 2008 when you joined. Do we have to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The market was frenetic to say the least. Yeah. You touched on why you joined SBN uh, when we kicked off this interview here. Could you expand upon that? A sure. Bit? So um, at the time prior to joining SBN, we were a uh, independent firm here in uh, one of the largest MSAs in the entire country. Um, I had looked around at the other independent firms that were established here, and I could not point to one that hadn't been already around for 10 to 15 years here in Chicago, where they had built their brand brick by brick by brick by brick. Um, so staring in the face of leaving the, the independent company that I was, or evolving it rather, um, was what do I do and how do I do this? And the first thing was, was brand. I mean, having an established brand for me was, okay, I had been in this arena for probably, you know, eight to 10 years in commercial real estate, and we got kind of pigeonholed as the neighborhood leasing guys. Um, and everybody said, hey, you're, you're a great broker, you're a great advisor, you know your stuff, you're good, but we're not inviting you to the table because we're inviting these guys because A, you're not national, and B, this is kind of, we see you as just a, a middle, smaller market independent company. So two, two factors there alone were not being invited to the dance and not having a real brand. My company at the time was really only, as an independent, was only about a year old when I made this decision. Um, so having that, having the network, having everything else, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, and I, uh, I get a lot of counsel from my brother down in Florida and he had been an independent general contractor uh, in South Florida for 28 years and I said this national firm wants me to and he said do it before I could even finish the sentence because he had basically brick by brick built his business he said in a market like Chicago you have to affiliate with these guys. It certainly gets you off to a fast start. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Alex, you touched on in terms of one of the reasons that you joined being drawn to the core covenants. Uh, anything else that you can add to your? Well, uh, one of the things I was thinking about, uh, and I, I don't have all the corporate accounts that Tony has, uh, but I do a lot of corporate work, which has really uh, been something that's come out of my affiliation with SVN. Uh, but I, I mentioned how my income doubled the first year, doubled again the second year. Well, the other thing that was going on was my profile was increasing within the market. And it got to the point where, uh, you know, I had a real estate coach uh, a few years ago, and, you know, and I'm still great friends with him. You may remember Rod Santa Massimo. And, and, and he, he, he's always like, you got to dominate the market. You got to dominate the market. And, and he was, you know, making a comment that, you know what, Alex, you dominate that market. And uh, it, it's really kind of, you know, you just put that off aside. But I got a phone call. This was just last year. Uh, and this, it, I'll never forget, I was driving down the highway, I was playing my messages while I was driving, and this lady comes on the phone and she said, uh, I am calling uh, for uh, Mr. You know, so-and-so, and this is like a, a multi-billion dollar REIT, and uh, he has assets that he wants to uh, sell in your market. And he told me that you are the only broker that he would consider working with. And my question for you is, would you have time for a conference call? Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> and so, needless to say, I, I, I told Sylvia, I literally played that back three times in the car and did not return the call until I got to the office and I could sit down. And I returned the call and, and she said, oh yes, you know, I, uh, um, I'm uh, supposed to set up this conference call when you have time. And we set up the conference call and what that business leader did, who was the CEO of this multi-billion dollar REIT, was basically introduce me to his team on that call. And they said, you know, he said, these are the guys that are going to be shepherding this transaction. This is the broker that you're going to be working with. I didn't have to present. I didn't have to compete. It was like, press here, the, you know, press hard, there's three copies. You know, here's my agreement. And, um, and, and he just said, well, what do you want for a fee? And I told him, and that was it. And uh, I sold the property 30 days later, and we closed about, it was about four months before it all closed. Uh, but that, we listed it for $23 million and uh, sold it for, I think, $21,750. And, and that would have never happened before SVM. Well, not for the brand and the yeah. Right. You, probably, you didn't know this, but um, so uh, about three months ago, a competitor of ours uh, who is only on the West Coast, they are in about uh, six states. They've got these national accounts, but cannot service those accounts all over the United States. So they actually brought us in on two assets in Tampa. We closed on one of them last week. And because we did such a good job this morning, I got another email from them. They're based in Phoenix, and they're wanting to use us in Yuma, Arizona. I mean, <laughs> this is our, I'm not going to you know, name names or anything, but because of the way we handle the account, and they knew that, okay, Tony, you and your team are going to handle it as well as us. They gave us you know, direct communication to their client. They knew that there was that trust, that we're not going to run away with the client. We closed the deal and we kept them weekly updates, you know, knowing what's going on and the broker could then go and get other business. And now I was with them last week celebrating the closing and they said, you know, we're going to let all our other advisors know that you can help them in markets that we don't cover. This is, this is a competitor. This is a competitor. And that's the culture. The packages that we're able to put together so quickly and um, that you know, may not be a big deal to a lot of people who have access to all of that, bigger firms and that kind of thing, but a small firm like ours, all, you know, that made us back, you know, when we first affiliated, that made us suddenly appear like, and I don't think it was a false facade, but it made us appear like a much bigger company with a much bigger reach and a broader base of support than we actually had when we first started out. And, and, and that's a huge thing. Uh, and I travel all over the country and I go to a lot of different marketing sessions. I'm going to Greenville, South Carolina to a marketing session and people and, and brokers go to these things from all over the country and not, it's not unusual for when they say, okay, give us a backup package. I hand them one of our 
uh, brochures and they're like, wow, this is a great backup package. And, you know, I go all over the country and, you know, I keep hearing that. So I'm wondering what everybody else is doing. I know the big brick and mortar places have some really nice packages, but that helped me as a small brokerage to suddenly have the same toolbox as the big boys. And it, it really did help me di differentiate myself in my market. There isn't a seller I deal with that doesn't listen intently when I say 9.6%. One becomes a very easy discussion, and and also the concept of things that we have for you know the Monday morning call, uh, you know S V N via live. No one has that, and I say you know ask my competitors, ask the other people that you're having come in and sit down and present to you. Do they cooperate? I mean, do they really cooperate with everyone around the country? And do they compensate? And do they compensate? Yeah. Um, so that, that 9.6 is a really big one, but I will say the one thing that I think has been driven, it, it might not be a tool, but it's been hammered home by this brand, is you better know your market. And so encyclopedic knowledge, because it's great to say we can get you more 9.6 if we list it, but you also better know your market. Yeah. So those two dovetail together are probably my two most important tools. I think my most important tool is not a technology, it's the people, you know, when Solomon and the co-chairs of industrial and land are constantly having Talking these about calls. about the product councils. The product councils, yeah. I'm, I, I try to participate on as many of those calls as I possibly can throughout the year because I'm learning about the different markets. I, I, I want to be a barometer for my clients as to what's going on. And participating in SVN Elite and those type of uh, you know, programs that teach you and see what everyone else is doing that's successful and what is not successful is is huge to me. It's that's the biggest tool is just listening to the collaborative effort of others um, because everyone is willing to share openly, and that's that to me is the biggest differentiator. I'd just like to point out that what makes these three SVN advisors so successful is authenticity and an unwavering set of principles. They focus on what they value and turn that into customer value, which in turn sets them apart. So you literally turn your values into a business strategy and it turns on a fire hose of profits for all involved and it's just a great thing to see. Thank you to our panelists and thank you our viewers for joining us. I'm Kevin Majacomo and would like to invite our viewers to find out more about Tony, Alex and Scott and the rest of SVN by visiting svn.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.